How do you glorify God in the midst of suffering? How do you continue to worship God when the pain is great? How do you give God praise when there's such great anguish? That's a question that's going to be answered today. We've got a clip by John MacArthur. He was asked about glorifying God in the midst of suffering. And I'm going to play that clip for you. But first, my name is Adam Markley. Welcome to Truth Transforms. The goal of Truth Transforms is to transform hearts and transform minds through the truth of God's Word. I'd just like to say up front, if you're new here uh, and you benefit from this video, go ahead and hit that like button. It does help this reach more people. And I'd really like for Christians that are suffering and going through a trial right now uh, to be able to see this video teaching. Also, if you do benefit from this, there will be a playlist at the end of this video with more uh, preaching and teaching on the topic of suffering and trials. First, I'm going to read some important scripture, give some commentary, uh, go to the clip by MacArthur, and close this out with what I hope is a beneficial teaching for today. All right, let's go ahead and get started. James wrote to the believers in exile, suffering great persecution and suffering, and said this, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Paul wrote to the church in Rome and said, Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. He also said earlier in his letter, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope. Of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. God has a purpose in suffering. It is a sanctifying purpose. Uh, he is continually conforming you to the image of God if you are in Christ. So let's hear Dr. MacArthur answer a question about how we can glorify God in the midst of suffering. Grace, I, I wish you were here. Um, love to pray for you and call on the Lord to pour out his grace on grace. Um, I think that you glorify God in a long, chronic suffering in a simple way, and that is thankful praise. Thankful praise. That's, that's maybe all that you can do. Uh, maybe your suffering has debilitated you. Maybe it's kept you kind of out of the the public, maybe it's uh, limited you, as you indicate in the question, to a place of loneliness. This is your time to express grateful praise. Grateful for the fact that the Lord has saved you, redeemed you, that He's gone to prepare a place for you in glory, that He's going to come and take you to be with Him in the very place that He's prepared for you there and that your suffering will end. There'll be no sorrow, no sadness, no sickness, no death, no tears. Now, you need to live in grateful praise. I know you say, well, it's easy for you to say because you're not in this chronic illness. I, I know that. But I do believe that there is no trial, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted or tried above what you are able, but will with that trial make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So grateful praise. 
lift up your heart to Him. I would, um, I would read the Psalms a lot, the Psalms, uh, because that's essentially what the Psalms contain. Just psalm after psalm after psalm of grateful, grateful praise for the promises of God, the power of God, and the fact that we're not going to face what the wicked will face in the future. And may the Lord give you much grace as you endeavor to do that. Amen. Grateful praise. No matter what's going on in your life, God knows what's going on. Uh, God cares for you. God is working in you. Uh, you can be grateful for the work that He's done, the work of salvation, the work of redemption, that He has a place prepared for you in heaven, a place where you will be able to be with Him with no more suffering, no more crying, no more tears. And uh, so we can give praise to God in the midst of the suffering, understanding that the suffering continues. But no matter what, we still praise God and worship God for all that He's done and all that He is, uh, our sovereign ruler, Lord, creator of the universe that um, has done everything and pours out every blessing on the righteous and the wicked. He is ruler of all, and to worship God is ultimately what we want to do at all times and most definitely in the midst of suffering. Let's look at one more passage here, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling, if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. If you have the Spirit of God inside of you, that Spirit is, is groaning and urging and, and hoping and looking forward to the day in which you can be with your Savior, Jesus Christ. That is what we look forward to. That is our eternal hope. And uh, that is why we worship God in the midst of suffering. That is why we pray. That is why uh, we read his word and do all of those things. And give God glory at all times. And it is the truth of God's word and the truth of who God is and the truth of all of what Christ has done for you and all of what he is doing in you now that will bring you through those times of great suffering. So uh, focus on Christ, fix your eyes on Christ, let his word dwell in you richly. And uh, if you are looking for more teaching, more preaching on um, this topic that may be a benefit to you. There'll be a playlist on the screen for you. Uh, you can look at that and um, pray. Pray. May God bless you today. God bless.